My name is Mike Sadler, and I've spent my life with cars. Whether it's sand dunes and drag strips, museums, car shows, even the backyard garage, I'm always on the lookout for speed and shine. Hey, welcome to Speed and Shine. There is a whole lot of summer left, so we're gonna head on over to Avenue Auto, and our friend Brian is going to show us a very affordable convertible Mustang that you could drive for the rest of the summer. But first, we're all familiar with the Henry Ford, but what you may not know is that from time to time, they invite car collectors in to display their cars throughout the village. It is a fun, family-friendly event, and it's called the Motor Muster. Check it out. I'm at the Henry Ford Museum at the annual Motor Muster, where the cars are on display inside the village. Let's go see if we can find some unique and unusual vehicles. Bob, we're not at your family picnic. Where are we at? Well, we're, we're here at the uh, Henry Ford Greenfield Village uh, Motor Muster, which is an annual event that's held on Father's Day. So on Father's Day, what you see when you look around at the crowd, you'll see the older guys with the younger kids explaining to them that <laughs> this is what I used to do in the factories around uh, Detroit area because a lot of these cars were built in the Detroit area and it's basically the motor city capital of the world. A few years back I held a big show here. I brought in 40 Superbirds. They held a show for us back over by the pond. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be there later. And uh, that was a giant hit. We became a, uh, a special feature for their show. When you go out in the uh, general area out there, all the cars are grouped together by years. Now we have a mixture from 60 all the way up to 72. So people have asked me, how come you're like that? I said, we're just a special display. And uh, since then, it's been a, a giant hit. We've been a special feature, which is uh, the only group that does a drive, pass, and review each day. Mm. But not this year, because they have a Lincoln, Lincoln special display this year for the anniversary of, of the Lincolns. So I organize this all through uh, uh, calling people. And this year is exceptional. I got everybody here except two people, and we have about 32 cars. It's a great show, and you, you got three here. So let's walk through these. Sure. The Yellow Superbird. The Yellow Superbird, I purchased it in 2001 from a guy that approached me, and he knew I was going to not just buy the car and flip it. Mm -hmm. The car was originally red, it was painted red when it was uh, in 1972, and it was completely painted in red. They took the nose cone, mm -hmm. they welded it to the fenders, and it was a drag car in New Mexico. So what happens there is, and it had a million holes drilled in it. This is all original sheet metal. Car only has 12,000 miles on it. Wow. I did a complete restoration on a rotisserie, and it took me seven years. I let it sit in uh, primer for a year just to get rid of all the shrinkage that would be in the uh, body work and whatnot. Sure. But, uh, you know, and uh, I don't do the, I did some of the body work, but the guy, a friend of mine that's a great painter, and you gotta paint a car every day to be a good painter, and you can't do it every 10 years. But I do everything else. All the detail work inside is original to the car, I restore the wiper motors, everything in there, all the plating I do. I take it to them on a rotisserie, which is a thing that just you can spin the car on. And then uh, he 
does the body work and paints it, and then uh, I do the vinyl tops, I do the upholstery, the dashboards out. This car is a, just a piece of uh, sheet metal with nothing on it. Mm. So I put all the glass back in. I, I assemble the whole car myself. So. Well, and, and I know that's true because I sold you parts for it. Yeah, and Mike was, uh, I was a lucky guy to find Mike back in the uh, early 90s, and I challenged him to find parts that he said weren't available, and he would find them. So I, I feel I had a small part in this, and it, it, it is just a beautiful car. And so this is uh, my first acquisition. Uh, we purchased it in 1988. Uh, I drove it home. It was uh, bought in... Uh, Detroit, downtown Detroit. I mm -hmm. found it in the Detroit News, classified ads, <laughs> went down there and uh, bought it and drove it home. Wow. So, and this car is out of Phoenix and it's rust free. There's no original floor pans and everything. So I completely restored this one. It's not numbers matching. It's built to the broadcast sheet and it was a dealer ordered car for their showroom. So it's pretty well loaded up. Mm. Uh, you'll see it has the uh, white 440 numbers on the hood with a blackout hood package. Yep, yep. You'll see that. And so this is the way it was sitting on a showroom floor. And this is our first attempt at a rotisserie restoration that I built a rotisserie and showed my son how to do this. And we put the vinyl top on. This was a shell that was on a rotisserie. So what we have here is a 69. This is a, uh, a recreation, they call it now, the new buzzword of a Hemi Roadrunner. It's got everything that a Hemi Roadrunner you could order from the factory done correctly. And except it would have a different air cleaner and it would have an air box, which I didn't like the look of. Yeah. This is more, this is more eye appealing than the big old black box up there. Sure. Anyway, uh, this is a rotisserie restoration that I did. This was a quickie job that took about two years to do. And the painter guy and uh, the same guy that painted the, the uh, yellow car. And uh, he also painted a couple of my other cars that my son now has. But anyway, it's a, it's a Hemi recreation. It's uh, originally a white car with a green vinyl roof, green interior Roadrunner with air conditioning. And I said, well, you don't have white Roadrunners. They should have never built a white Roadrunner. So this color car, you could get any color interior that Chrysler offered in 69. So I chose green, which was original. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's really different. I get a lot of looks on it. Uh, and this color, uh, red is really attractive. And everybody has black interior. And I just didn't want another one. So this is called uh, A4. Platinum in a Plymouth line, and in Dodge it's called A4 Silver. Mm. Yeah, the, the, it's very striking with the green interior. You wouldn't expect that until no, you see no. it. No, people look at the green interior, and I got one buddy that says, tells me I was crazy. Then you get some other people say, that's really neat and different. And it's just personal. And I, I like green interior. We've had brand new green interior cars back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So it was nostalgic, but yet it come out really nice. Well, Bob, thanks for taking the time to talk to us, and you do a great job getting this organized. And Yeah, well, it comes out pretty special, pretty nice, and uh, I'm glad you guys were able to make it, and uh, you're going to have a long day ahead of you. <laughs>
a okay. whopping 13 horsepower. All right. Two stroke. So you do mix the oil and gas. Okay. Um, this was a car sold in Germany. This particular one was sold in Berlin in 1959 to a shoemaker who had kept the car for 25 years, then sold it back to the dealership, which would become an Opel dealership, and they put it in their showroom for the next 26 years. So it's first 50 years it was in Berlin. Wow. And you drove it here? I drove it on a trailer, then drove it here, okay. because right. your top speed on this is 50 miles an hour. It takes about 40 seconds to get to 50 miles an hour. Right. So out on the roads today, you would be really fending for yourself to uh, be able to uh, drive this. But Is it really reliable? Very reliable. It's uh, uh, a very simple air-cooled uh, two-stroke, two-cylinder motor. Mm -hmm. Um, gravity fed fuel, no, there's no fuel pump, so it's a very basic car. But for a micro car, these are fully realized cars in that they've got independent suspension, okay. hydraulic brakes, all steel body, four speed manual on the floor. So they were not just a scooter with the body, they were actually a car in miniature. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's just amazing. Now, did you have to restore this yourself? Uh, good question. Actually, this is a 26,000 roughly mile original car. The only wow. thing other than mechanical maintenance has been done is the lower red paint has been resprayed. Okay. In the original color, this is all original paint here. Right, so right. Just the, the door exterior. jam, gotcha. The company that brought it over from Germany to, to California they resprayed it. I don't know why. Uh, there's no rust on the car or anything like that. So other than that, if you see the interior is all original. Engine's never been out of the car. We can show you that. And so this is really a survivor other than this red paint, but that is the correct color. Yeah. Yeah, let's look at the engine. All right. All right. Let's, you're not going to see a whole lot because it's the way it's designed, but you can get an appreciation. Well, it's really clean and tidy in there. Yes. It is. It's. Uh, you can see it's got an individual coil for each so, cylinder. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the air right. breather there. Here's where you fill the fuel. You can see the mix yeah. in German there. It's 1 to 25 ratio. These were 12 volt right from the get-go, so that's nice. Yeah. You can see the small 12 volt battery in there. Yeah. Um, it was. I, the, it's got a, the single carburetor there, the single uh, Bing carburetor. That I had, that was... That was one thing I had to, it hadn't been driven in seven years before I got it. Sure. So it just sat there and it really, uh, the gas had pretty much putrefied and it was pretty nasty. But uh, but once I got that running, you know, it puffs smoke like it should, like a two-stroke. It's stroke. supposed to, right? It, like it should. So, um, yeah, these cars are interesting too because, as you can see, there are actually quite a bit of nice design elements well, on this. Well, they that. are. They are. It wasn't just a simple micro car. Even the dashboard, you know, they really wanted to. It's it's more stylish than the Nashes down there that we looked at. If you had your choice, yeah. this is more sporty. Yeah. I like this. And some of the other cars at the time, like the Vespas and that, weren't didn't have these kind of design elements on them. And it looks like you won an award there. Well, that yeah, that was a the, the Haggerty brought their the youth judges around. It was really nice. They were real young kids and. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they gave me the third place for their voting, and well, which was nice. Yeah. So you, you take the car to get ice cream, cruise. What do you do with it normally? Well, I will drive it out. Uh, you know, there's a little loop I can make where I stay off the main highways. But if I'm going to go to any kind of shows like this, we pretty much put it on a trailer and take it there. And what's nice about this show, of course, you've got all this where you can drive around. So we had it out yesterday. I probably will later today, driving around the roads here. Uh, so you got to pick your spots. Sure. But yes, that's that's about all you do is uh, take it out and put around in it, and uh, people just like looking at it. No, I mean, I, that's the the I best can, part is watching people's reaction to I it. I can understand why. Because it's a real car in miniature. You know? Yeah, it's great.
makes a claim with America's preferred home warranty, she's able to choose her own licensed contractor for the repairs. But why does that matter? Let's see how it benefits you. First of all, you can choose a licensed contractor you know, or someone who comes highly recommended. Also, you can choose someone available on your schedule. After all, if a repair is urgent, you don't want to be waiting for the warranty company to send someone. You want it done fast. When you choose, you're in control. Your claim is determined using an independent assessment from your licensed contractor. And you can apply your claim payment to the parts and equipment that work best for your needs and budget. Finally, Hannah loves that choosing her own licensed contractor keeps money in her local community, which is a win for everyone. Just remember to always reach out to APHW before starting repairs. It's good to have a choice, and choosing your own licensed contractor with America's preferred home warranty gives you the flexibility and control you deserve. Okay, this is a 1938 MGSA Tickford drop head foursome. It's a custom body by Solomon and Sons. And what made it unique was in 1935, MG was in trouble, the Little Roadsters. So Worsley, a competing company that made big four-door sedans, said, we need something to get people into the showroom. Mm -hmm. So they bought MG. And MG said, well, we want to make a big car, too. So this is the largest MG ever built you're looking at right now. And most of them, about 2,000, were four-door sedans. But then the, the upper crust of England said, we want to go to these fancy Sunday breakfasts and stuff with our friends. They're coming with Bentleys and Rolls and fancy cars. MG, you need something fancy. So they developed the Tickford, a custom-bodied car by Solomon and Sons, like I said. And that means it has a three position hood. That hood will roll up to the front of the windshield. It'll roll back to where it is now. And then there's primer irons on the side, which will break and it goes all the way down. Mm. So this car had many unique features. Uh, it's the color is, it, look, it looks green, but actually it's a duo green, which is original. If you look at a tree over there, it's a green tree, but it's multi shades of green because of the reflections on the leaves. Well. The top of this car is like an apple green, the fenders are an Ulrich green, very subtle, and that was all by intent. MG, they love themselves, they could hug themselves to death. Look inside the headlights there, <laughs> you'll see MG crests. You'll see MG everywhere in this car, the knockoffs, the handles. Um, 15 times around this car you will see the name MG. Amazing. So, I did all the work on this car, uh, including the painting, the restoration. I thought I had a break with the engine because it looked pretty good. But then I saw that 14 inch crack along the side. It was time to learn metal stitching. And so we metal stitch it, but it runs great now. So um, there's some other things that were peculiar to the 1930s. Uh, in England, they had what they called a 30 mile an hour law. It was sort of like the double nickel law we used to have back in the 70s. Some of us remember that. Uh, so you couldn't drive over 30 miles an hour in England. And if you did, on this car, there's a light that lights up and says, Hey, buddy, you're breaking the speed limit. Slow it down. And if you look at any of the other 30s cars at this event, you will see on motorcycles and everything else, an indicator at 30 miles an hour. Be nice. And, but they had an ulterior way of maintaining that. At 3,200 RPM, this car will do about 30 miles an hour. So that's, that's ridiculously high RPM for that speed. So, of course, I modified it with a new ring and pinion. So at 3,200 RPM, it is doing about 70. So, but it runs very well, very fast. It's got, the engine is a six cylinder, 2.2 uh, liter. And what they did from the Worsley with its six, they just added another carburetor and said, hey, it's upgraded to be a high speed engine. Mm. <laughs> now what you, what you see in this engine, it's got updraft carburetors. Most of them have downdraft. Yeah. That's unique. This is your toolbox. You got all kinds of, well, I'm gonna hit that, but. Pretty rare. Oh wow, look at that. Uh, this car, the reason there's a spare distributor in it, at one event, Amelia Island, 
I actually broke that distributor, <laughs> and so I keep a spare just in case I break it again. This is original to the car, for a the, hammer. For the knockoffs? Not for knockoffs. This is to fix the carburetors. <laughs> oh, the carburetors aren't running right. Okay, <laughs> tap it. Free up the floats, get everything running right, mm -hmm. and that's good. you got a much bigger hammer right here for the knockoffs. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you got a block of wood because you don't want to hit the hit the, the ears with it. Right. Uh, that Those exhaust manifolds, they look white, but they're actually aluminum, mm -hmm. liquid sprayed aluminum on there, molten. And you can see where they're looking a little aluminum-y. Yep. That's from being polished because of the way they're made. Sure. Uh, it's very tidy under there. It's yes. What's unique about this one, look at that. This is, what's this shiny fancy part? This is called your brake fluid reservoir. Mm. In 1938, they came out with something unique. Instead of cable brakes, they came out with hydraulic brakes. Mm. And so the salesman would pop the hood and say, look what we've got. We've got a brake reservoir fluid. So you've got hydraulic brakes, buddy. Nice. And so that was very, very impressive. Uh, and let's walk us through that. These are known as this car on each side of this, and there's different ones on the other side, not grease, but oil. Mm. You put oil through these fittings, and there's lines that go to all the oiling points on this car to oil everything. There's also lines, of course, for the what they call the jack-all system, and then there's brake lines. So you got to be careful when you do anything with the lines. I guess, yeah. I happen to do all the sewing in the interior. Suicide doors. Suicide doors. Uh, Adjustable elbow pads. Oh, oh, okay. Push this and it goes up and down. Yep. Uh, Soak door poles. Mm -hmm. the, in, the dashboard that's supposed to be either brass or gold plated instrumentation. And if you look, you'll see the little green light that says you're doing 30 miles an hour. Well, Lee, this is a, a beautiful car and I, I thank you for taking the time to talk to us about it. Well, you're more than welcome. Uh, uh, last thing is uh, you know, everyone wonders what's in the boot. Oh. This is where you store the car cover? Yeah. Underneath this little thing here is a door, and under there is all other tools. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff in this car. They thought of everything. Well, we can go on and on and on, but uh, it's a pleasure. It's always fun to talk about this car. Goon, yeah. this is a a really cool vehicle. What is this? It's a historical vehicle, actually. Uh, so, you know, it's all the flags, the patinas on it. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, 1964 Lincoln Parade limousine used by various dignitaries. Uh -huh. uh, most notably, the Pope Paul VI wow. for his parade in 1965. And you guys just got this? Uh, we got it in 2016. Okay. Uh, about, yeah. Uh, it had other owners beforehand, and then we saw it as part of the collection as something we can maintain and also bring it out for Motor Muster. Hmm. Like this event, yeah. So it's got the flags that they would change these out if they needed to? Yep. Is what they would There's do? historic photographs where the, um, for the Chicago one where it had a Vatican flag and U.S. flag. Uh, these okay. flags also are not original. The, the, we have the original ones. They're very degraded, so it's something we don't want to bring out for. So you yeah. reproduce those? Yeah. All right, now this car isn't bulletproof though, is it? No, it's not. It's not it's as heavy not. like a, one of those presidential vehicles. Yeah, so we noticed, noticeable things like the um, very thin windows is right. like one, one, one case, yeah. And then, so they would stand, the, the security would stand on that? Uh, we, their historic photographs don't actually show that being used or installed. So okay. it may have been used for the uh, Apollo astronauts because it's used by uh, Buzz Aldrin. And, oh, uh, this yeah. was? Yeah, yeah. This Aldrin, exact yeah, car? Yeah, wow, yeah. how historic is that? Mm -hmm. And so they can get up in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. There's a, 
There's a stereo back there and a wood box, yeah. a couple seats. And There's a PA system too. Uh, you see the plugs there. There's two speakers in the front underneath that's really hard to see. The mm -hmm. seat cranks up about 12 inches, hand crank, so nothing too uh, crazy there. It takes a lot of work to get it up. So it goes up so they yeah. can see them. All right. Mm -hmm. And does something normally go over that? There's yep, like a top? there's like a, a, a hard top, yeah. Mm. Uh, the hard top is probably like a PVC. It's very yellowish uh, uh, type of plastic, so it's starting to degrade. So it's something that just also it looks nicer without the top. It gives an idea that it's a, uh, more than just a limousine, yeah. This car must be special. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, it looks great already, so that's one thing. It's, it's 1941 Lincoln Continental Mark I, but it's Edsel Ford's personal car. Wow. And it's designed by E.T. Gregory. It was all hand-built. It has a V12, and it's one of those uh, cars that, it's, it's still a lot of history to it. It's been restored, repainted uh, back by a previous owner. Well, it's great that you guys have it back, and it, it looks wonderful. Now, is this on display in the museum where people can come and see it? It used to be on display, but it's back in storage. Uh, we have to make room for our Driven to Win exhibit. Okay. Uh, yep, it's a racing exhibit. Mm Brian, we're out here on a warm summer day to look at a cool summer car. What do you have? We've got a 1998 Ford Mustang GT. And it's a convertible. It is. There is a whole lot of summer left to use that too, even yes. into the fall. Yes. Is this a local trade? A local trading, yeah. We just acquired it a few weeks ago. I uh, thought we'd try to put it out here before uh, fall comes. So with these great wheels and this cool color, does it have a great engine to match? It does. Let's does look it. at it. Let's take a look. Okay. Oh, look at that. So what I like about the car is it's a sports car. It's got a little bit of muscle, but it's you know going to be in that affordable price range. Right. So this does still, it, being a V8, it has some horsepower. A little bit. Well, yeah. uh, I think we looked it up and it was 225 stock. That, that's pretty good. It that's appears pretty to be good. pretty stock. I don't think anything much has been done to it. It's very clean underneath. Yeah. It's got a horse there on the, uh, the <laughs> plenum or whatever, and uh, it looks good. So what was it, nine, what year did the Mustang start? 64. 64, okay. Six, four and a half, what they go by, so yeah. I had a, my wife and I had a 67, but it was just a six cylinder car. Kept it for a few years, we had kids. We weren't driving it much, so we got rid of it, but it was cool. I've owned my share of Mustangs. This is nice. Now, the inside here is a black interior. Yeah, let's take a look. It's very clean, very clean. Oh, it's got a Kenwood aftermarket stereo in there, CD player. Very nice. What I liked about this car is we can't see it in the right now, but the top is very in nice shape, and it works. Power top. Yeah. Very, and very nice seats with support. Decent shape for the year. A lot of these sit out in the sun, and you know, it's just hard to maintain them. It's got nice wheels on it. Color looks great. The yellow is, I guess you either like it or you hate it. So right. <laughs> I kind of like it. It stands out. Yeah. Now, if somebody pulls out in front of you in the intersection when you drive in this, <laughs> they definitely need to get their eyes checked. Definitely, right? definitely. So you have all kinds of cars here. What, you know, what do you sell the most of? We do, we, we sort of specialize on a price range. Uh, we like to keep it in that, I say f five to 25 range. Okay. Uh, a lot of, trucks, minivans, SUVs. It seems like everybody's looking for something third row, so we always try to have third row vehicles. We just, uh, we like to have that price range uh, a bit more affordable than some of the newer stuff. Sure, and how do people look at your inventory? How do they check it each week to see what you have? Visit us at avenueautousedcars.com. Mm -hmm. You can give us a call at 517 7800022 
or just come see us right here on the corner of Lawrence and Michigan Ave, right here in Jackson. Are you open on Saturdays too? We are open on Saturday from 10 to 2. And do you do service here? Or? We do. We yeah. service our own cars and we do offer some service for the public as well. Oh, great. It was great spending time with you today. Thanks for coming out. I'm not sure that thing even works. Wasn't that a great event? And we keep running into Ken, whether it's the beer truck, the go-go mobile, and Bob with the Mopars. If you want to see more that they have, more cars, please check out our YouTube channel and look for the playlist. Like, share, and subscribe. And we're gonna look at a very affordable convertible that you can enjoy for the rest of the year. But first, we're gonna go, nope. We're gonna head out out to, all right, just, just.